Hello everybody and welcome back to Imperator Rome, well, you, where you'll notice it's several days forward from where it was at the end of last episode. That is because my button that I press as my hotkey for stopping the recording is pause, which unpaused the game. Which is not, you know, strictly speaking helpful. However, we are going to immediately dive in here into doing something, and specifically, we're going to do some of these missions. I was looking around in all of these tabs off camera, and I discovered this, and this looks like a fantastic thing to do. So we're just going to do these, I think, directly in order. Assuming that the game allows us to, and we don't just, like, choose one. That'd be very strange, though, I think. So we need to do Aftermath of the Revolution. After our disastrous war against a, a Gathocles, I'm going to go with, in Sicily, the traitorous Sufet Bomulkar tried to sell our lands to gain tyrannical power for himself. Many were led astray by his ideas and plans, and even though they were pardoned, there are still conflicts and disagreements lingering all across our nation. The mission will be considered complete when the lingering effects from Bomulkar's revolution have been resolved. So we will start this. Excellent. So these are what we have here. This will take 365 days to complete. On completion, we will lose 25 political influence and a new character will appear in Carthage. The Council of the 104 are the leading judges of the nation, making important decisions on the behalf of the people as a whole. Not even we have the power to oppose them entirely, and it would be beneficial to come to an agreement with them if we are to make more radical changes in our political system as they could oppose it. So this is going to be a pretty lengthy process, it looks like. Each one of these is likely going to take a year. We would need greater than 60% of the votes in the Senate for this one. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and I think 50 gold and a new character would appear here. We're going to go ahead and run Agent of the 104. So that task will be completed on 7 October 451. Of course, this is the uh, Roman time scale. For those who prefer the Gregorian calendar, the current date is 7 October 304 BCE. Excellent. Okay, so a few other things that I noticed. If we go into the military tab here and go into the levies, I was reading this here off camera. Levies can only be ra raised from integrated cultures. Levied pops will not produce flat resources while they're raised. Going to war can be a costly affair. Additionally, when a levied subunit is destroyed in combat or overrun, there's a chance that an associated pop will be too damaged to recover and be destroyed. So using levies seems to be a little bit on the risky side. So obviously legions are the preferred form. So there is that. Okay, so there's all that under control. Now, I was looking around here. These are tribal vassals, and tribal vassals we cannot integrate. And we also can't change their tribal stat tribal vassal status. So I think eventually we'll have to cancel their status and just conquer them. However, for now, hello pause menu. For now, we are going to come on over here, and I was looking around at this area. Now, we have a lot of settlements out here, and I do remember the settlement versus city dichotomy. Now, these guys over here, they produce base metals, which does give us light infantry offense, which light infantry is pretty bad unless they've changed that. Uh, okay, they're good against supply chains. And that's about it. <laughs> yeah, light infantry are real bad. As opposed to heavy infantry, who are far better except against cavalry. But of course, that is what you have spearmen for. Although I don't think we have any of those currently. Or just cavalry to counter their cavalry. However, we don't have any legions right now, so we can't really worry about unit composition. What we can do is invest a little bit in our nation. And since this is called Prosperity of Carthage... I feel like that's something we should probably do. Now, this here is grain, so we should obviously build a farming settlement here. Now, as far as cities go, there is this whole state system. I don't remember. Yeah, they had this previously, but I didn't really utilize it in any effective way. But I'm, I'm thinking right now that we're going to have, like, one city per state, and then all of these will be, like... Uh, all of these out here will be 
supporting that city. So hopefully we have l less food issues in our metropolises a little bit later on. Now, I don't see any effective way to upgrade this from a city to a metropolis. That might be something that automatically happens. But I was looking at these possible buildings here. You get a building slot for every 10 pops. Which is, you know, all well and good. But there's a population limit. That population limit can be increased by ports which give you a population capacity of plus three, but they use up a building slot, so that's minus seven overall in terms of population capacity. And then there's also aqueducts, which are actually minus two in terms of building slot to population capacity, because it costs a building slot to put this in, but it only gives you eight population capacity. That's a little strange, certainly. There is... A granary there that is of course for storing food and we can see this is our monthly food income where do we see our food stores in here this is our civilization value I know that there's or at least there used to be food stores I'm quite sure that there still are maybe that's done on the province on the provincial level yeah that's on the provincial level okay that is fine then so that's on the provincial level, and we're building a farming settlement right here. This is wood here, which is good for our maritime empire. Of course, I hate boats, so there's that. It's going to be awkward. But do we want to build any other settlements right now? Now, that's a question. Now, this is already a city in this state. So... I think the, the policy will be cities that are already in the state will probably keep that way. We just won't build any cities, or rather upgrade settlements to cities, unless they don't have one already in the state. So you can see, like, this state here, yeah, it crosses borders into our vassals. But you can see here that this state has no cities in it. So this settlement would probably be, or perhaps even this coastal one, would be one that we would be interested in upgrading to a city if i knew how to do that it might just be that you need to reach the population cap before the button pops up or something along those lines but for now that is completely fine we do need to tick forward because we can't declare war until if we go into here we can't declare war until 1 november so one month in, that's fairly standard in a Paradox game. So we're going to go ahead and tick forward and see what our treasury looks like after the very first month tick here. Hello. These guys, uh, they want to... Ah, there we go. These guys want to import stone from Sicania. And I generally just accept these without really looking at them very much. Because generally I like the cash. If we run into issues with trade goods later on, we can re-evaluate that. So we will go ahead and take forward until... Oh, hello. That's a lot of trade goods coming in. We will make sure to accept these before... And yeah, not all of them can be accepted before the month tick. Okay, there's the month tick. We can see we're losing 1.53 right now. Now, some of that is due to fort maintenance. We can probably cut our fort maintenance... Uh, so this is signifying that this is a fort, I believe. Yeah, that's a fortress there. So how do we cut our fort maintenance? Is that... Oh yeah, that's just in the economy tab, isn't it? Yes. So we'll cut our fort maintenance. The question is, do we want to cut our fleet maintenance? Hmm... That would reduce our morale of navies dramatically. So maybe we'll hold off on that for the time being. Just cutting our fort maintenance saves us 0.45. That gets us down to about 1.0 per month that we're losing. We're certainly overbuilt on our navies though, right? That is a thing that is happening. So we may want to... You know what, let's go ahead and cut our, our naval maintenance. We can always bump it back up later on. So now we should be positive economically. That is wonderful. And we can declare war. Now, I, I was looking through the levies system specifically to check to see if these levies raise in the state that they're from or if there's a like CK3 style rally point 
it seems like they raise in the state that they're from. Which is going to be interesting for getting up here, right? Th that will certainly be interesting. I'm interested in potentially declaring war on these. We do have a show superiority war goal here that we probably shouldn't utilize. We should fabricate a claim on them. Okay, we'll get started on that. And in the meantime, I do want to try raising up the Magna Grisha levies just to see what happens. It looks like they raise up right here. Okay. Units are 500 now instead of 1,000. That's a little bit different for sure. And we can see here, yeah, that's ex exactly what we expected. So they instantly raise in, is this their capital? Yes. They immediately raise in the capital of the state that raises them. Okay. That is great to know. And now, how do we put them down? Can we put them down from this interface? We cannot disband levy. For proper disbanding, please use military view. Okay. So we got to go in here and then disband all levies. Disbanding all levies will make its levied pops return to their homes and block you from raising the levy again until four months have passed. This date will be increased by up to 12 months based on the current strength of the levy. Okay, so they could take up to 12 months to recover. Yes, we'll do that. I mostly just wanted to figure out how exactly this works. Is there an option for just using the Gregorian dates? It doesn't make sense for Carthage to use the Foundation of Rome date. Uh, let's check the settings here. Game settings, perhaps? Interface? Hmm. No? No setting for it. Interesting. Whoa, hang on. Did I just see a low setting? I did. Let's fix that. And a medium? Get out of here. Okay. That's a little bit better. We'll save that. Is this shadow quality? Oh, yeah. They accept 4K shadows. I did not check these graphics before setting this up, obviously. I just assumed that I was already at max, but uh, no. Nope, that is not indeed the case. They must have made some changes there. Okay, now we're at max. I honestly don't notice any difference, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm sure my computer does. So we'll proceed for now, and there are more trade requests coming in. Again, I'm just going to accept that. Wonderful. I am noticing that our nation flag appears to have vanished. Hopefully that'll come back when we restart the game after this episode. Yes. I accept everything here. Oh yeah, now we're making cash. That's what I like to see. Now are these guys pirates? Hmm, this is Emporia. They have a CB on us, but they're a feudatory of us. Okay. Now, one thing we do definitely want to work on is seeing about getting some of our Senate support. Now, it looks like this is our succession support. So, these are all traditionalists. What is our party? Democrat. Okay. So, essentially, we've got a bunch of oligarchs over here. It looks like the oligarchs pretty much have control. That said, they're only at 50% approval. Traditionalists are decreasing. That's okay. There are actually very few traditionalists in the Senate. I don't mind that. Democrats are pushing for term length, and they want shorter terms. Now, if we were to do this, we have less than 51% Senate support. We need to work on our Senate support before we can really do anything. Now, where do we see our actual Senate support? Security Assembly, Senatorial War Council, okay. We can advocate legal reforms. That'll cost 2,500 manpower, which we're capped on. Actually, we're not capped on. We were capped on. Pop promotion speed, national noble happiness would go down, monthly Democrats approval would go up. Now, we don't actually have that many Democrats in the Senate. Most people are oligarchs. So that's interesting. 
They control 46.15% of the Senate, and we have 50% approval. Fascinating. So I think we want to manipulate candidates. That would cost five, what is this, tyranny? Yeah, five tyranny. So that's okay. That'll tick down over time. And it would cost us 25 political influence as well. Yeah, I'm okay with that. We could, well, we would lose the same amount of approval that we would gain, actually. That's not net positive. And because the oligarchs only control 46.15% of the Senate, how do they have fractional seats? Okay, that's awkward. That's very awkward. <laughs> I would have rounded that personally. But okay, they have fractional seats. That is good to know. However, because they only have 46%, losing an equal amount of, of support from traditionalists plus Democrats actually ends up meaning that we lose more control than we gain from doing any of these. So none of this is worthwhile right now. The agenda being term length might be useful. So if we were to push that through, we still don't have the Senate opinion. That said, the oligarchs are improving by 0 0.05 per month in their approval. So I don't hate that. Our stability is actually going up a little bit too, which is a little odd considering this is like a uh, karmic stability model in this game, kind of like karma in EU4. Okay, these guys want wood. Sure, we will export that. Okay, we accept all of this. We got to get that Senate support before we can really do anything though, and that's okay. We... What is our... Hang on, how much would these mercs cost? 215? Fine. That's okay. I do want to continue working on our core state here, or our core province, rather. But we just don't have the gold to construct right now. That said, with all this trade, we absolutely will. And we want to definitely work on our economy. There's no doubt about that. I want our economy super duper strong. Oh, hello, our flag is back. Perfect. That is wonderful. So it is currently March, and we can see that our support in the Senate is 50.15. That's up here. Good to know. So Democrats, oligarchs, and traditionalists are the three senatorial parties. And the traditionalists are, of course, losing a little bit of support. And these Democrats are gaining support. By how much? 0.4. Okay, oligarchs and Democrats are gaining at the same rate. So that's fantastic. That means we will hit 51% support in the Senate relatively soon. But if they were going to do this fractionally, I would have had it be greater than 50. If I'm nitpicking. <laughs> Oh well. We're gaining 165 manpower per month, which isn't too bad, really. And let's check in on our mission here. So this will be finished on 7 October 4 451, and that will be done quite soon. Wonderful. Yes, I accept. We're making more and more money with all of this exporting. And we don't necessarily want to export all this, of course. But right now, I'm most interested in constructing... Let's see here. This would be wood that pr that is produced here. So, technically, the best building for that... Every 15 slave pops will produce an additional wood. So the question becomes, do we care about producing wood... And if we do, then we build a slave estate. And if we don't, we can't build a port, obviously. I don't want to build a fortress. I don't necessarily want to build a barracks. Although maybe I do. The question then would become, do we want the additional manpower? Or do we want tribesmen? Which I believe tribesmen, if I recall correctly produce taxes and manpower. 
Similar to Freeman, actually. Slaves do produce taxes, but they also produce the trade good in the region. And citizens produce manpower and research points. And nobles just produce research points. Okay. So the question then becomes, what do we want to go for here? I believe tribesmen are more weighted towards manpower, and freemen are more weighted towards taxes, or maybe that's not the case. That's citizens, of course. Let's see. Three freemen pops are producing 0 0.01 base tax and 9 manpower. So that's 3 manpower and a negligible amount of tax compared to one tribesman now he's only at 29 percent output because he's not i think happy and because it's a settlement which doesn't help we'd have to work on annexing him into our culture assimilating is the term so yeah that's a thing that we can definitely work on yes we accept this but yeah we need to figure that one out there view pops info okay so we can see the cultural assimilation the religious conversion here and the pop classes so yeah citizens here we go this is what i'm looking for citizens produce two local manpower 0.2 research points they consume 0.3 food and they also produce local based trade routes interesting and we should be able to see that Oh, that's the optimal and desired ratios. Yeah, that's fine. So the tribesmen, they don't produce taxes at all. But they do produce three manpower. And they don't consume that much food. Slaves. If we go in here. Oh, no. It doesn't want to let me access slaves. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's because this is actually stuck in the same location. Interesting. Well, we should be able to see it here. Yeah, slaves produce a tiny amount of, of tax, and they consume a small amount of food. But, they produce the trade good there. Freemen, of course, according to this, don't produce taxes, but they do produce four manpower at the cost of two monthly food. Which I believe means that they're basically just... Kind of an upgrade over tribesmen, except they take more food. They're a little bit more efficient, but they eat more food. Okay. Noted. So that's a thing, then. In a situation like this, we would probably want a barracks for the freeman ratio, then. Because if we were to build a tribal settlement, tribesmen produce less manpower than freemen. And as long as our food is fine then that's good. Except that this doesn't give population capacity. Ooh. Ooh. So this would be plus 10%. So that would be 1.7. Possibly rounded to 2, possibly truncated to 1. Is that really relevant, though? That's the question. I think in this case, we're going to build a barracks. This is going to be our capital province, of course, and we want this to be a very powerful province, militarily. Economic provinces can be outside. The patriotic citizens in Olbia Razna are ecstatic at our benevolent rule. In honor of our majesty, they've kindly raised a rather pitiful sum of gold, hoping to procure some political favor. We simply hadn't the heart to tell them their gift was a trifle. I mean, this guy's going to lose 10 loyalty for this? That's new. They didn't used to have that because he would gain jealous. Or we could let them keep it and we would gain 5 popularity and five lo and he would gain 5 loyalty. We're going to go ahead and take it for right now because we could definitely use the funds in investing over here. We're mostly waiting on Senate support. Oh, hello. This event has finished. The 104 is a council of judges that in many ways control the politics of Carthage behind the scenes. Though they make fewer of the day-to-day -day decisions, they have the power to topple any ruler, if need be. 
After it became apparent that we were looking to improve our relations with the council, we were sent a messenger working on their behalf named Adonabal Abarid. He's already started drafting up plans on how we can give more power to the few powerful men and women at the top of the Carthaginian hierarchy. He seems like an interesting fellow. Okay, we're going to immediately begin work on another one of these here. Now, we need a lot more senatorial votes here. We could immediately go down to oligarchic rule. Although I'm noticing these flashing red up here. Does this bypass those? Oh, look at the crumbly rocks there. I'm guessing that it does. So if we were to grab this... Okay, so we need to get Maharbal Garbalid's popularity up above 50. And we actually can't get that started yet. Now that is, of course, I believe our ruler here. Yeah, that's this guy. We need to get his popularity up above 50. His popularity is currently 48 and decaying. As Okay, that's fine. We have a disagreeable Safet. That is, of course, one of our rulers. Lately, we've seen a lot of disagreements between Himilko Barka and Marhabal Gerbalid on how Car Carthage should be ruled. Both of them are trying to push their own agendas through the Senate, often conflicting and even scheduling their debates to coincide with one another. Now a group of oligarch loyalists have approached Marharbal about switching their loyalties to the Democrats instead. Apparently there have been schisms within the oligarchs, which have in turn led to their loyalties to the faction to waver. Public is publicly supporting these dissenters would surely end with hostilities between the, the two Safets of Carthage. If we controlled the Senate, why would his opinion matter? Well, we don't want to lose that popularity, so we will absolutely do we'll absolutely do this. Now, that did drop our support in the Senate, apparently. And the question is, why did that happen? Because the oligarchs dropped down to 35% approval. Right. Okay, yeah, that would happen. The democratic approval, however, is coming up faster. So that's great. That is absolutely wonderful. It is, however, time to put a cut in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and next episode, we... Oh, what can we complete? Oh, oligarchic rule. Yeah, but I don't necessarily want to bypass these. Next episode, we will continue investing into our home province and working on our senatorial support. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and I will see you all next time. <laughs>